Hello and welcome to the Lit Lotus podcast. This is the podcast for empaths, yogis, and spiritual beings who are seeking transformation in their mind, body, and spiritual health through a holistic approach to wellness. I am your host, Melinda Van Kirk. I lead transformational journeys to better health and wellness through self-love, self-care, and simple habit evolution, following the ancient wisdom of Ayurveda. Ayurveda is yoga sister science and it approaches health through living a life of ease with less stress, simple foods, and straightforward daily routines to help you rebalance your mind, body, and consciousness. I lead a year-long group called the Living Inspiration Tribe and this is a collective tribe of women who have committed to improving their mind, body, and spiritual health in a holistic way. The women in my group experience better sleep, improved energy, a healthier weight, reduce stress, and they feel reconnected to their bodies. We love, we inspire, and we thrive. We are lit, we are creative, and we are an amazing group of women. So if you'd like to learn a little bit more about that, please head on over to my website at melindavankirk.com. You can select the Living Inspiration Tribe at the top. Um, and also I offer one-on-one -on -one wellness coaching if you're a little bit more interested in sort of sampling what I do, head on over to the offerings tab on my webpage. And soon this webpage will be on litlotus.me. We are not quite there yet as of the date of recording this podcast, but that is coming. So you will be able to find me in either location for a little while. So on today's podcast, and we are in episode two already, <laughs> just kidding, <laughs> but we're in episode two, and I just wanted to talk a little bit about discovering your dharma and what this has to do with wellness. And if you're not familiar with the word dharma, this is essentially the idea of you following your life's path, what you were meant to do on this planet in this life. Um, specifically, I would say around what lights you up. What are you inspired by? What just ignites your passion and your fire within? And that is usually your dharma. A lot of times we connect this idea of dharma as something that's not ever going to happen. We can't achieve it. It's a childhood dream. You're a dreamer. If you think that you can make a living or follow this as your career doing what you love to do. And that's a really kind of sad way of looking at it because are we really truly happy then in just taking the job that pays the bills? Is it really worth sacrificing contentment with something that you hate? Now, I'm not saying that you need to go out and quit your job tomorrow. I'm just saying part of this path of wellness is delving in to what lights you up and finding ways to tap into that. So a really good example would be, you know, maybe you don't hate your job and it's fine, but then you're not doing the things that light you up in time outside of work. And that's doing a disservice to yourself. So maybe you're all consumed with family and you're consumed with running around with the kids or, you know, there could be a multitude of reasons. Maybe you're consumed with your work and you're not setting boundaries around your work. There's so many ways that we go down the wrong path and we feel like we have to follow this hustle culture and this productive lifestyle and being productive 24 seven, right? It's, it's like we're always turned on um, these days, especially with screens, social media, everything. We're, we're so connected, we don't really take time to unplug. And so when you look at your life, do you ever think, you know, I'm not doing the things that light me up. Perhaps you love to sing. Perhaps you are an artist or you used to love to draw in school. You used to love to paint. You used to love and to run and you don't do that anymore. Uh, maybe you like to hike outdoors. There could be a million things that light you up. And though, those are the things that I want to tap into today in our conversation. So when we explore our dharma, it's, it's our unique and bigger life purpose. You know, most of us are not here on this planet to work a nine to five job. Now, you might be in a job that you are super passionate about and that you love, or maybe you did when you started. And there could be some disconnect along the way. 
And a lot of times we are able to like take a step back if you're in that passionate role, say, what do I love about this job? What brought me to this career to begin with? And, and then delve back in or restructure your days so it becomes your passion again. And if you are in one of those jobs, that's amazing. Um, I, I, you know, I wish that for everyone. Some of us are doing a job that we're just doing to do. We feel like we've been trained to do this, but it was never our passion. Maybe we went into school in a career that our parents wanted us to, and it was never your passion to begin with. You're probably feeling pretty unhappy every single day. So what does this have to do with wellness and feeling good in your body, right? What does this have to do with health? Well, it actually has everything to do with health, honestly, because when you are feeling disconnected from your life, you're feeling like you don't have that passion or that bigger life purpose that you are serving, then you are doing a disservice to yourself. You are not feeling connected you might feel like low vibrational. And I'm sorry for the long pauses. I'm trying to choose my words carefully. And when I say low vibrational, you know those days when you just kind of feel like fuddy-duddy, eh, 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 that's low vibrational. High vibrational, the days you feel inspired and alive and excited. And that's the days that you live for. Those are the days we are in flow or in Kriya. So when we decide at whatever age that you have to follow this, whatever career path it is you chose or life path, and you never in, feel inspired or connected to your daily life, you're going to create what we call in Ayurveda is ama. Ama is toxic and it's, it's created in the body from toxicity. So that toxicity comes from foods. It could come from your environment. It can come from your mental state. All these things create ama. And it's literally a sticky substance that builds in your body and it creates dis-ease. Um, not disease per se, although it could eventually lead to disease, but it creates dis-ease in your body. You don't feel good in your body. It might settle into certain areas and you might be prone to... Um, dis-ease in, let's say, your joints, say arthritis is something that runs rampant in your family, and you find that this ama, this toxicity that builds up in your body, settles into those areas, and all of a sudden you have horrible shoulder pain, or perhaps this pain in your neck. You know, there's varying degrees and levels. It might start with something small. But when we are not living in our dharma, and we are not following that unique life path, we are creating mental toxicity. Culturally speaking, we suffer from toxic productivity. That's that hustle culture mindset that we constantly need to be doing. And it's causing burnout. It's causing mental health issues. It's causing physical health issues. It's causing us to lose our joy in, in our day to day. And it's leading to this epidemic of like burnout, depression, anxiety, sleep disorders, inflammation in the body, which Chronic inflammation in the body really results in a multitude of diseases. All our autoimmune issues are ultimately connected to having this chronic inflammation in the body. And this chronic inflammation is essentially ama. Again, back to that word ama, toxicity. It's what builds up in our body and is keeping us from feeling flow or feeling that spark of passion. So really with today's podcast, I just wanted to bring in this idea is that the inner work and the outer work go hand in hand. They are not exclusive to one another. In yoga, there's something called the five koshas. And these are the five layers of ourselves. These five layers start with our outermost layer is the anamaya kosha. And that's our food layer, our physical body, our skin, our tissues, our bones, our muscles. That's the outermost shell of our being. And the second layer is pranamaya kosha. And that's our energetic body. A prana in yoga refers to breath. That's our life force energy. So we're going a layer deeper um, into your energetic body. And we all can tap into that at any point in time, right? You kind of you pause for a moment and say, how am I feeling? And tap into, okay, my energy is really high. My energy is pretty low. What do I need right now? The third layer is monomyakosha, and this is the mental layer or the emotional layer in our bodies. 
This is when we kind of tap into how are we feeling mentally in the moment. And again, this is something that's very tangible. So these outer three layers are something that we can usually pretty easily stop and reflect on if we get to that point. Sometimes we just push through and ignore it, right? Um, especially with the mental layer and the emotional layer. But, you know, if you're feeling extremely sad or depressed or extremely happy or excited or anxious or whatever it is, you, you can tap into that energy pretty easily. And in yoga, it's about going even deeper. So the fourth layer is the Vijnana Maya Kosha. This is our intuitive layer, our wisdom body. This is the one that we tend to push aside, we ignore. And this is definitely connected to our Dharma at this level. So your intuitive self is your gut instincts. You know, as children, I feel like we're pretty good about following our gut instincts. And then as we grow older and we're taught, oh, you're just being silly. Why would you think that we, we are taught to ignore them on some level? And so Vijnana Mayakosha is about tapping back into that intuitive layer. And that intuitive layer and intuitive body is what's going to help you tap into your Dharma. And it's, it's one of those things that Dharma you might know instantly, or you might sit there and think, oh my, I don't know, and you get caught up in these thoughts about what is my dharma, what am I supposed to be doing, maybe I can do this, maybe I can do that. That's probably not your dharma. Your dharma is going to be what you connect to, what you realize ignites you when you are in this calm state of mind, when you are perhaps meditating or going for a walk in nature, or even in the shower, like when you're disconnected from, from the other stuff and from the mental chatter, and you're able to really feel it or tap into it in your body and say, okay, yes, this is what lights me up. And then the last layer of these five koshas is Anandamaya kosha. This is your bliss body. This is your higher self. This is your connection to that bigger purpose. And ultimately, your dharma is connected to this point. And tapping into the bliss body is something that can be quite challenging. If you're a regular meditator, sometimes we get there with our meditation, not always. Um, you might experience it during a yoga class. You might experience it, it just being out in nature. So there's times that those little moments of just feeling complete bliss, connection to the world around you, connection to the spiritual version of you, and knowing that we are all part of this bigger um, space, this bigger universe. So what is the point of talking about all of these different layers? And I'm going to circle back to what I said earlier is that the inner work and the outer work go hand in hand. We must find balance in all five layers of our lives in order to truly tap into our Dharma and in order to truly improve our physical, mental, spiritual health. So this balances your physical body, your energetic body, mental body, intuitive body, bliss body. Yoga, the word itself, means to yoke or to unite. And what I am all about as a wellness coach is uniting, uniting your mind, body, and consciousness. And what does that mean? And it starts with this mental shift. So uniting mind, body, and consciousness, we need to think bigger than perhaps what you are do already. You need to tap into this intuitive body. You need to dream of like, what identity do you want to create for yourself? Do you want to feel like I'm stuck in a job and I'm creating this identity of, I have no choice. I am not empowered. I, I have to stay here because it pays my bills, which believe me, I have been there for years. If I hadn't gotten laid off from my last job, I don't know if I would have ever taken any kind of leap into starting my own business ever, but I was completely miserable and disconnected from everything, mentally speaking. Even with my yoga practice and my meditation practice, those are, were tools to help me, but I never understood that I was creating this world for myself. I thought I was just stuck here and I didn't have a choice which we always have a choice, and that's, that's another topic for another day. Um, but I just want you to think about what is your highest form of joy with your highest form of service? And that's the way Sahara Rose defined it in her podcast, the Highest Self Podcast. And I loved that definition because it's not just your highest form of joy, like we can all have our highest form of joy as, I don't know, traveling the world, but what is that combined with the highest form of service? So what lights you up inside, um, 
you know, in your heart center? <laughs> what makes you say, oh my God, I did something so good for someone else today. And for me, my Dharma is exactly what I'm doing right now. I am navigating this path and truly finding my Dharma. But it's combining all these tools and things that I've learned, gained expertise in, and sharing it with others to help them. So I am a yoga teacher, I'm a Reiki master, I'm an artist, I am a um, wellness coach, and it's putting all these things together into a package that's gonna serve others. Uh, I'm all about serving women. I know how we've been culturally, I hate to use the word programmed, but I'm gonna put it out there, culturally programmed to be in service to others and not in service to ourselves. And I truly, truly believe that in order to be in service to others, we first need to be in service to ourselves. You need to prioritize yourself first. And this is true for any be human being, whether it's man, woman, non-binary, trans, whatever you want to label yourself. If you do not feel like you are serving yourself, you're basically just giving your energy away to others. You're depleting yourself in order to give to others. That doesn't work like that. It's becoming a cliche about the whole oxygen mask parable, but I'm going to parables, probably not the right word, but the, the quote, I'll just say that way, is that you need to put on your oxygen mask first before you can put on the oxygen mask of others. And that's so true. Um, and that's not to say that times don't come through your life where you have to give more than you have. Like if you have an infant child, for, for instance, there are times that it's hard to put those boundaries. But most of us do a lot more than we really have to. And so... When we look back at this idea of Dharma, I ask you now is to kind of take a few minutes, if you have a moment, you can pause this podcast or do it later, but begin to just sit and reflect on the things that light you up. And perhaps you know your Dharma maybe is as a volunteer. It doesn't mean you have to change your career. Maybe you like your job well enough, but you're not doing everything to support yourself. Maybe part of finding your dharma is realizing that you're doing so much and you need to come into balance by starting to say no to things. Because when we say no to things, we give space to say yes to other things. And when we say yes to everything, we have to say no to other things, right? We only have so much energy. And just beginning to tap into that and figure out where, where am I using my energy? Where does it feel right? In yoga, that's called brahmacharya, right use of energy. And that's one of the three pillars of health in Ayurveda as well. But thinking, where can I properly use my energy? Where do I want to say yes? And where do I need to start saying no? Where do I need to start setting up those boundaries? And how do I structure my life in a way where I have balance and where I'm doing the passion things, the passion projects? I want to bring in this idea of Kriya, which I mentioned earlier. Kriya really just means flow. And so when you are living your dharma, you feel in flow. You feel kriya. You are vibing high. And I love the word high vibration. If you think about a low vibration, I mentioned this earlier, but you're just not feeling so much yourself. And when you're vibing high, you feel like you could take on the world. And there's a multiple levels of things in between, but there's emotions connected to that. So when you are vibing high, you are experiencing gratitude and joy and excitement and all these other things, when you're vibing low, you might be experiencing fear, anxiety, frustration. There's emotions attached to those vibrations. And so the ultimate goal of total wellness is finding this flow and finding it using practices that are gonna bring your life into balance. And I'd like to bring in um, something from the Bhagavad Gita. It's India's ancient scripture, and it speaks in detail about Dharma. And Krishna, in advising the reluctant warrior Arjuna, tells him that it is better to do your own Dharma poorly than to do someone else's well. Only when you figure out what you are uniquely able to do and carry it out as well as you can, can you truly feel fulfilled in this life. I just want you to think about that again. And this is from Yoga Journal, from an article I read there. So let me just say this again. Krishna is advising Arjuna and tells him that it is better to do your own dharma poorly 
than to do someone else's well. Only when you figure out what you are uniquely able to do and carry it out as well as you can, can you truly feel fulfilled in this life. And so I'm bringing this point back around. But again, when you feel you are in flow, you are living your dharma. And that does not mean that this is just one thing in your life. I personally feel like it can transform itself. I'm one of those people that I'm always experimenting. I love to learn new things. And I feel like the times I have taken on different jobs or different careers or different roles in life, that has all been part of my dharma, all of it. Because there was absolute periods of those different passions that I had that lit me up and inspired me. And I think I really just evolved from those. And so it's not that they weren't worthwhile in my life, but maybe that's just what I was meant to do is try out new things and try new things, learn new things. And that's just, um, that's just how I am. And in my human design, I'm a, I'm a six, three profile and I'm just getting into this whole idea of human design and we'll have another episode on that. But six, three profile is meant to be experimenting until I come into my true wisdom and my true expertise, which is where I feel like I am heading towards now. So this, concept of dharma is truly starting to resonate with me in terms of yes I'm actually following my dharma and when I live my dharma and I live in flow I actually manifest all these things that I want to bring to myself so I invite you to reflect today if you can and think about what is your dharma where do you feel out of balance in your life where would you like to see flow? So we might have parts of our life that we feel like we're in flow often. Perhaps it's your job. Perhaps it's your family life. Um, perhaps it's none of these. And if it's none of them, then I really encourage you to sit down and write down all the things you do and start looking at where do I need to say no to things in order to make space for the flow. Because when we don't have space for the flow, we can't find that balance in life. Let me say that again. When you don't have space for flow, you will not find balance. You will not find health and wellness, true health and wellness. You might be very active and physically fit, but that doesn't mean that your mental body is feeling in balance. It doesn't mean that your intuitive body is feeling in balance. And this whole idea of balance and what this looks like with the five koshas is all a process. It's a practice and it's an evolution and it's a lifelong evolution. And that is the joy of learning yoga, of learning the five koshas, of understanding what it is that is our dharma and just starting to tap into to ourselves. What lights you up and where do you want to be as you take this next step into life? Where do you envision yourself? What is the next identity of you? And we have to start with a thought process before we can make the changes. And I'm going to be really clear on this. And this is something I bring into my health coaching group because everybody wants to know, what do I eat? What do I do? Just tell me what to do. Give me a pill, et cetera, et cetera. That is not the, the path of, of wellness in my group because it's, that's the short-lived path. That's the path of this works when motivation is high and it doesn't work when motivation is low. As a wellness coach, I am very much about we need to first shift your mindset and I'll still give you those tools and help you with the food and help you with, you know, how to set your boundaries up for life. So then it's part of the process. But if you don't start with the mindset and say, okay, I am the kind of person who, and fill in the blank here, I am the kind of person who lives life in balance. And then what does that mean for you? And even if it's not true in the moment, I like to set the intention as if it's happening. Because if we set it as I will do this, it's always gonna be in the future tense. If you say, I'm the kind of person who lives life in balance, therefore these are the habits I have in order to live my life in balance. These are the things I need to do to find that balance. And so I really invite you to take a few minutes, reflect and then journal five minutes, right? So maybe 10 minutes total in this activity and journal, I am the kind of person who, and even if you're in your car and you can't journal, just 
do a voice memo real quick. I am the kind of person who lives my life in balance. I am the kind of person who is healthy and fit. I am the kind of person who puts herself first. I am the kind of person who loves herself immensely. I am the kind of person who recognizes her dharma and lives her life according to that. Whatever floats your boat here, whatever speaks to you is where you want to stop Write it down and then think about the behaviors that connect to that. So the behaviors help us move into that next identity. And then the outcome is all the other stuff. The outcome is feeling good in your body. The outcome is physical fitness. The outcome is losing 15 pounds. That's the outcome. That's the side effects, the side benefits of doing this process. Because you have to start to shift the mindset in order to shift your behaviors and in order to achieve your goals. So we're flipping around what you've probably learned most of your life and we're bringing it to a whole new way of, of thinking about things. And it feels a whole lot easier, at least to me it does, to start with a thought process than it does to just go clear out your pantry tomorrow and change everything you're eating. And not that that's not a good tool and not a good practice. But it's a lot to take at once and it's only going to work when you're feeling motivated and when you're not feeling motivated, where are you going to go? So when we shift our mindset and we build small habits and we build onto these habits, you're going to start essentially making new neural pathways in your brain. We're going to have a new routine, a new structure, and then you're going to start doing the behaviors that bring you into this next identity of yourself. Okay, I'm going to wrap it up here for today. I would love to hear from you. Feel free to shoot me a message um, and please head on over to my webpage. It's melindavankirk.com. Living Inspiration Tribe is my in-depth year-long group program. And again, there's one-on-one -on -one coaching options as well. There's a six-week starter package if you want to go down that route. And everything I do with my coaching is based on Ayurveda. I'm not an Ayurvedic practitioner or doctor, but I live my life in an Ayurvedic lifestyle and I bring that piece of what I know into my coaching. So yoga is part of this. Wellness with Reiki and having this whole body, whole mental wellness is, is really how I approach all of my coaching. And then soon to come will be litlotus.me and lit is love, inspire, and thrive. And that is what we do here at Lit Lotus. All right, folks, I hope you have a wonderful day and stay tuned for episode three. Take care.